Hello again. We have now understood what the interview is all about. We have looked at different kinds of interviews and we have examined uh, how to prepare for those interviews. Now I am going to take you to through how to prepare for an interview in more detail. I am going to take you through a seven step formula for preparing for an interview. So, the first uh, seven in the seven step interview prep plan, the first step is to research the organization. One candidate stands, stands out from another candidate because of the homework, because of the trouble this candidate has taken to find out what about the organization he or she has applied to. What Remember what we said that interviews are all about matching your profile with the profile of the with the profile that the organization has in mind. And how else would you find out what the profile the institution or the organization requires, but but for finding out what the organization is, what is the mission and vision of, of the organization, what what are its objectives, what are its products, what is it plan, what are its future plans. So, you need to do this homework well before you go to the interview, not only to impress your prospective employers, but also to prepare yourself for the kind of questions that would be put to you. Mind you, there is nothing worse than somebody uh, seeking a, a position, even if it is a simple position of that of an intern, if you have not done your homework properly, what a bad impression it creates on the person who is uh, receiving or who uh, is judging, assessing you. I have myself received a number of emails from very young students, I must say, who, who probably had no idea, but I, one makes concessions for people being young and does not expect them to be perfect. But what one does expect is that if someone is sending a mail to you, uh, they should at least find out what your gender is or what your specialization is before they drop an email to you asking you if you can take them as an intern. So, I have been receiving mails after mails from uh, young students in different institutions asking me if, uh, if they can come and intern in an economics project with me. <laughs> I have nothing to do with economics. And uh, these are mails which are probably formal mails sent to everyone. So, I am addressed as sir and I am told that uh, this person, <laughs> it is so ridiculous because this usually says that I have gone through your CV and I find that I, uh, you are the best person I can do my economics project under. And I am like, oh, obviously this person has not seen my CV. Otherwise, if this person had taken the trouble to look at the website and looked at my qualifications, they would not have sent me a request of this nature. So, it is the same rule applies to organizations. So, how do you find out information? In present day and age, it is so easy to get information about organizations, because every organization has a website where they place important information about yourself, uh, about themselves. So, uh, a, a website of an organization gives you an idea about the breadth of what they do. Review the organization's background and mission statement. That is where you begin. You want to know what they are, what, what, what do they want to achieve and the mission statement is the best way of finding out. Assess their products, services and client base because Organizations often put to put up very tall, very idealistic or very far-fetched mission statements or vision statements, whereas when you actually look at their client base or their products or their service base, you find that it is nowhere what they are professing to be. So, uh, in addition to, uh, remember a website is an organization trying to showcase itself and an organization always tries to 
put its best foot forward by saying nice things about itself, by saying, uh, presenting a very positive image of itself to prospective employees or clients. Now, how do you make sure that what the organization is saying is fits in with your goals? Is it an organization you really want to work in? So today, you have other sources like press releases, uh, which give you, which may give you a different picture altogether, or which might corroborate or confirm what the organizations claim to be, or what people outside think about them. So you can also use tools like World Career Search or the Riley Guide for an overview of the organization and its industry profile. What else can you do? You must get a perspective, review trade and business publications, seek perspective. This is what I was saying that an organization is bound to say nice things about itself. But if you look at trade or business publications, you get a clearer picture of where this organization stands vis-a-vis -vis other organizations and uh, whether you want to be part of this organization. Develop a question list. Prepare to talk ask about the organization or position based on your research. Now, this is the time you look at your skills and qualifications to the job requirements. As I said, your uh, skills and qualifications, your profile should match the job requirements for you to make an impact or you, for you to land that job. Now, why is it that you need to research the organization? Because as I said, every organization likes employees or interviewees who have done their homework. And uh, it's also for your own good because uh, you can prepare what you want to say unless you know what the organization does, what the company does. How else would you prepare questions? So uh, you, you, you will also guess the questions the interviewer is likely to ask if you know enough about the organization. So if you haven't prepared for the interview, you're unlikely to have coherent responses to why you are interested in working in XYZ company. Interviewers are looking for an answer, how well you organize your response and how you articulate or express yourself. Now you must practice these responses. By practicing your responses to possible questions, you'll be able to put your best foot forward. Recruiters are in always invariably Im impressed with candidates who demonstrate good communication skills, not only good grades, but who also taken the trouble to research on the company and ask pertinent questions. So that show that uh, they've done their homework will impress uh, an employer. So just technical skills are not enough, but they also need people skills. They also need to know whether you know what you're going in for and whether you've prepared yourself for that. So you must know the position, company, industry before you come for an interview. If you have researched and asked knowledgeable questions about organizational structure, activities, and your role in the company, your interviewer is bound to take notice. Your effort will display intelligence, resourcefulness, diligence, and most of all, interest. Employees, remember, are not just looking for people with great skills. They are also, in, in, uh, we, we said, what is an interview? Whether you will do the job. So they are also interested in candidates that demonstrate interest in the job. Why? Because interested employees work harder, show more in initiative and enthusiasm, and have lower turnover rates. So always come prepared to ask questions for the interviewer. Now the second part of uh, the second step is to analyze the job description. Having looked at research the organization, now you need to know exactly where you fit in. What is it that is required of you? So the exact job description, uh, you are going to align ally your abilities and skills uh, to the profile of the organization only if you know what is the job description and how your skills, your competencies, your qualifications f uh, are equipped, uh, equip you for that particular job description. 
So, outline the knowledge, skills and abilities required. Examine the hierarchy. Determine where this position fits in within the organization. Look side by side. Compare what the employer is seeking to your qualifications. Now, uh, remember that when people do not come prepared, it is uh, very irritating, I must tell you, to interview such uh, candidates who have not done their homework because usually the advertisement of a company, the job ad advertisement clearly lists what are the requirements, maybe not as much the job uh, description, but the position itself should give you a clue of what are the job requirements. Now, st uh, people uh, do not, who have not done their homework, who do not research the job description, they come looking blank and you, you ask them, uh, when the interviewers ask them a question, would you be able to do it? They do not, uh, uh, they look clueless, they say, yes, I might be able to do it. But one is impressed by a candidate, not a candidate who has excellent skills, but a candidate who says that I I have I have these skills which help which equip me for that particular job description. I will be able to do this because I have these requisite skills. Or or even if you don't have requisite skills, you can say I'm going to learn these skills in order to be able to fit the job description. So this is how you can orient yourself. Uh, your you, this is how you can orient your job profile to your own personal profile to the profile that the organization is seeking by looking at the job description care carefully and uh, positioning your own skills and uh, skills and characteristics uh, that fit that job description. Now, what are the skills and characteristics that companies are looking at? A survey has listed these skills. So, desired skills are analytical skills. Obviously, everybody is looking for an analytical skills. Computer skills in this, this day and age are important. Oral communication skills, written communication skills, but also leadership skills, interpersonal skills, teamwork skills, work experience or internship or co-op experience. But in addition to your skills, oh, employers are also looking for desired personal characteristics, which include honesty, integrity, motivation, initiative, communication skills again, self-confidence, flexibility, strong work ethic and enthusiasm in addition to many others. Now, I am going to show you how you can use techniques to demonstrate skills or personal qualities. Uh, Mind you that many of us are have a number of skills. We have a number of qualifications, but it's not enough in order to land a job to say that to send your CV and to assume that since you have a great CV, you have a flawless or impeccable CV or impressive CV, people are going to hire you. Remember, employers are busy people. They might receive. 200 applications for a particular job position and they are not going to look carefully through each of each of the things you have listed on your CV. So, do not assume that the employer has read each and every line on your CV. Most of the employers are just going to do the skim test, quickly run through your CV, see that satisfied uh, after, after their, uh, another team screens the applications to make sure that you have the requisite qualifications, the top level employers who are probably going to interview are just going to skim through your CV carefully. Now, it is up to you to, sh to uh, orient those skills that you have put on your CV or those uh, qualifications that you have put on your CV to, to, to uh, ma make out co coming as, uh, make yourself look as a person, like the person they really need by, uh, by showcasing these skills. So, uh, it is like if you are hiding your talents, it is not enough. You cannot just sit and assume that people will know how talented or how intelligent or impressive you are unless you show them. So, interview is a situation 
even if you are an introverted person, which many of us are, this is your space, this is your forum, this is your avenue where you show what you are capable of. In order, because if you sit quietly or you just wait to be asked questions, people are not going to know what skills you possess. And um, sometimes when people in the non, uh, in the directive interviews, people don't ask, give you a room. They don't leave room for you to uh, showcase anything extra than what they have asked you. You can give answers which demonstrate the abilities you have in addition to the ones the interviewers ask you. So let's look at some of these skills and how you can show that, sh what are the techniques you can use to showcase these skills. So let's begin with interpersonal skills. If you want to demonstrate your interpersonal skills or qualities, one way of doing it is providing examples of how well you have handled co-worker or student relationships, both in individual and group situations. You don't always need to have work experience. Even as students, we have, uh, we have situations where we have worked in teams, where uh, even if it's a simple thing like organizing a college fest, we have opportunities to collaborate with other members, whether we are submitting a project a uh, term project or an assignment. So you can provide, you need to show how you handle these relationships, both in individual and group situations. The other thing is related, which is teamwork. Here also you need to show examples of how you. Now in teamwork, examples are very dangerous because um, very often we tend to uh, talk about the work which was done or which was accomplished by the team as a whole. And uh, our effort is to, sh uh, to, uh, to make sure that we come out looking best by highlighting that and so sometimes we even, uh, mind you, there are people like that who, who take credit for the entire work which the entire, which the team has accomplished as a group, not they individually, but there are egoistic people who want to take credit for all the work. Now remember, employ, employers and interviewers are trained to find out if you're taking this credit which you don't deserve or your, so you would have specific questions put to you, okay, this was the work which you did, what exactly was the responsibility given to you and how did you solve it? What was your contribution to this project? What, was it an individual project or a team project? And they have, fi they have ways of checking if you are fibbing. Because uh, I've sat through interviews where uh, students of an entire class who talked about a particular project. Now each of them was talking about the project and uh, it, it, it would appear that this particular student has done all the work. Now, uh, when five people came and tell you that they have done this, they have worked on the same project, you need to know what exactly did you do. So, through cross talking, cross checking with each and every student who, five of them who worked on this team, we were able to find out what each of them contributed. We all know, interviewers know that there is a lot of camaraderie among students and you often put the names of your friends even though they haven't had time to contribute to the team because it's your loyalty your, to your friend. But mind you, interviewers are trained to read through this and if you haven't really contributed to it, you might get a question where uh, you might uh, be asked to explain something which if you are lying, you will be in deep trouble. So don't do that list your specific task assigned to you or the work you, the exact contribution you made. Analytical skills. Now, analytical skills for this also you can provide examples of how you were able to gather and analyze relevant facts. Use those facts to identify alternative causes of action and determine the risk benefits of the possible Alternatives. These days I also find that interviewers pose a situation to you 
which requires you to use your analytical skills. So if you don't provide examples to them, they would give you a scenario and they'll ask you to uh, analyze to so as to be able to assess your analytical abilities. Then we commu come to communication skills and communication skills you cannot provide examples you have to just demonstrate strong verbal skills during the interview Con concise articulate example you know that itself can speak volumes about your own communication skills. Uh, from here let us move to the next set of skills uh, flexibility. For showing your flexibility also, you need to provide examples of your pro positive reactions to your changing uh, environment, such as responding to unexpected work or school experiences. So you can talk about a situation where a group team member or you are asked to do something, you, uh, you were asked to submit it by a certain deadline and then there was an emergency and you were asked to do it. Uh, earlier and how you coped with that situation or uh, uh, if the environment changed. So if a certain team member dropped, uh, fell ill and you were asked to step in for that team member. So what kind of flexibility you have. Then we come to leadership skills. Uh, employers are always trying to look for leaders and for leadership skills. And obviously, all of us cannot be leaders. There are some followers. But in interviews, we all try to, and maybe we should try to project itself as possible leaders, if not uh, or leaders who are born. But we could demonstrate different kinds of leadership skills through providing examples or contributions we have made to even if we are students to student organizations, work projects, class projects, other even extracurricular activities show whether you possess leadership skills or not. Then we come to honesty and integrity. This is remember employers are not just looking for machines or robots who can accomplish the job. They are not looking only for competence, they are not looking only for uh, skills and knowledge. They are also looking for people. They want people. They also emphasize people skills. So even if you are a very uh, intelligent person, very capable person, but if you lack people skills, you are a dishonest person, employers would not want to hire you. So I have found in the interviews I have conducted honesty, integrity, even personal integrity, personal honesty in your relationships uh, has counted a lot and can make a mar a career or make a mar your chances of getting a job. And in this you can show your answers during the interview and reporting. I mean whatever honesty can be shown by admitting if you have done something do not cheat. Whatever you have actually done even by reporting this no I, I was not the top person, I was not the best person. So that honesty is very disarming. Do you remember that incident of uh, 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 in Three Idiots where uh, you do not answer where your honesty itself can be disarming. Uh, remember when this Raju Rastogi character is called and he is given a hypothetical situation and he says will you, will you do this and he says no which is not the right answer, but, but uh, he says he will not do it because uh, it is more important the learnings that he has made as a person. Uh, he is not going to compromise those learnings for the sake of an organization and you saw how disarming it was and all the interviewers were won over by his disarming honesty. Motivation and initiative. Provide examples of how s you have a strong drive to achieve and can be optimistic even in the face of failure. Now uh, this motivation and initiative is often demonstrated by the uh, by things you have put on your CV because um, there are things which you do which are beyond the call of your duty which you have done 
say volunteering for something, taking the initiative to organize something. It may be a very small thing, but situations where you have taken the initiative, even if it's learn teaching yourself how to play the guitar, you know, it's little things you can list because uh, they might be on your CV, but you have to impress the interviewers that you are a motivated person, you are the person who takes an initiative because they might not have the time to go through your CV carefully. Self-confidence goes by, obviously, by how you look. You don't really have to sh uh, give examples. You just have to show it. Your eye contact with the interviewer, your body language, your poised and professional demeanor, all this shows your self-confidence. And your enthusiasm best show through your voice, arm gestures, again, and body language. I've heard colleagues tell me how they were impressed by, uh, by a person so-and-so because he or she looks, you know, when she or he or she speaks as if every pore of her body or every pore of his body is, da is raring to go, is raring to take on the task. So even if this person doesn't ultimately do it, the impression these people get is that this is a very enthusiastic person. On the other hand, you have laid back people who do not want to even, they sit quietly, even if uh, they, they are capable of doing something, even if they are going to deliver. Since they don't show, the, their voices don't carry enthusiasm, they do not get that opportunity. You can't always wait for opportunity. I've had people who look very enthusiastic and who haven't delivered. And I've had people who did not look, who looked la very laid back, but who always deliver, who always do the job. But interview is a very short period for you, for people to make decisions about you. And the responsibility, the onus is on you to tell the interviewer whether you are interested or not, whether you are enthusiastic or not. Now, the third thing is to prepare your responses. Most interviews involve a combi combination of resume-based behavioral and case questions. So you must, uh, you, you must try to practice telling your story in the best possible way. Uh, questions based on your resume, questions based on behavioral questions, and the case-based questions. All three are mixed. Next, we move on to your what to wear or your dress and appearance because Remember, we've been harping on this point that the way you project yourself, the impressions you create by your visual appearance goes a long way in the image that you project to others. So plan what to wear. Go neutral. We will have a separate session or uh, at, at least a few videos on what to, how to dress for an interview. But some quick tips, go neutral. Conservative business attire, such as a neutral colored suit and professional shoes is best. They say that you must always air formal. If instructed to dress business casual, good, use good judgment. Plug in that iron, make sure that your clothes are neat and wrinkle free. Dress to be impress. Be, be sure that your overall appearance is neat and clean. Remember, as we said in the session on body language, you can afford to break the rules if only after you have achieved something or if you are taking to willing to take a gamble. Sometimes you dress in a very unexpected way and that's what catches people's eyes. But you are taking a very big gamble because it can either impress or it can turn people off. So suppose everyone is dressing conservative and you try to wear something bold, you might stand out in the crowd and maybe somebody will say, oh, this, is, uh, this person is looking very bright and I must hire this person on the basis of how they appear. But then you might turn off another group of people who feel that you are not appropriately dressed. So you must be very careful about sticking to the rules or breaking the rules. Plan what to bring. You should bring extra copies of your resume on quality paper in case the you, sometimes you have more people on the panel than, uh, than you had bargained for or sometimes people don't have the resume on them. So bring extra copies or updated copies 
on quality paper, bring a notepad or professional binder and pen, bring a list of references in case employers seek them, information you might need to complete an in application, sometimes you are offered a job then and there or you are asked to make an application there, a portfolio or you have to fill up a summary sheet, so bring all that information and a portfolio with samples of your work if relevant. Now, the sixth step is to pay attention to nonverbal communication. We have dealt with this in great detail and we will do it again is be mindful because nonverbal communication speaks volumes. Start ahead. Remember what waiting room behaviors may be reported. We will take you through this. Uh, often we tend to prepare ourselves to meet the panel and we do not pay attention to uh, how we are projecting ourselves when we are sitting outside the interview room. But mind you, some employers are very clever and even if they do not do it deliberately, it is possible that your waiting room behavior may be reported. Say, you are, uh, uh, say if you are sitting very, you are very nervous in the waiting room or you are talking too much or you are uh, sitting in a slouch position. So, all these things might project a different image to the employer than you want to project. It is possible that the employer or the interviewers just walk in their rooms with while you are sitting there and they formed an impression of this of you as a person. So, start ahead. Project confidence, smile, establish eye contact and use a firm handshake. Now, remember this is very important for, uh, for uh, relationships and for the also it is a form of respect. I have sat through a couple of interviews where a particular uh, interviewee who I know has directed his or her smile at one member of the panel and not you know carefully avoided looking at me, or making eye contact with me or smiling at me or even greeting me. So, uh, whatever you know particularly with known persons even if you do not share a very cordial relationship, uh, it is not a nice thing. It is like a way of saying you do not count for me and yes, if I am not, if I am a fair person, I am not going to uh, let this go against you, but at the same time, I am not going to help you out because through your body language, you have shown me I am not important. So, when my chance comes, I am not going to help you out because you have already spoiled your relationship with me by ignoring me. This does not happen always deliberately, it happens unconsciously also, uh, subconsciously when you try to pay uh, you know you a particular member of the uh, panel, this happens in panels, when a particular member of the panel is more friendly towards you or you you feel more comfortable with a particular member of the panel, you try to address all your questions to the particular panel member and you ignore other panel members altogether. So, they do take stock of this and you must be very careful. So, be attentive, do not stay, but maintain good eye contact while addressing all aspects of an interviewer's questions. Respect their space do not place anything on their desk. When you are, when you are carrying, uh, this happens to us, when we are carrying our portfolio, we are carrying a folder and it is a small table or a very busy table, we tend to place all our stuff on the table, which does not leave any room for others. So, try not to do that. Manage reactions, facial expressions provide clues to your feelings, manage how you react and project a positive image. Sixth step is to pay attention to non-verbal communication as I said and we come to the final step which is follow up. Uh, many interviews end with do you have any questions? So, bring a list. Now, if, uh, if you have prepared your done your home, homework, you might have a list. So, you say I took down some questions before I came, please allow me to review my notes. This gives the impression that uh, you have done your homework. So, use this as an opportunity to any questions that you might have or any questions that might have occurred later, even those you can put. Be strategic, 
cover information not discussed or clarify a previous topic. Do not ask for information that can be found on organizations website. So, in your opinion what makes this organization a great place to work? What do you consider the most important criteria for success in this job? Tell me about the organization's culture. How will my performance be evaluated? What are the opportunities for advancement? What are the next steps in the hiring process? So, if you were to follow these seven steps before you go for an interview, you would be well prepared for facing an interview. Thank you.